Scientists say these volcanoes should erupt soon. Should the world brace itself for some coming danger or wave it off like it's nothing? Volcanic eruptions have not done humanity much good. There have only been a few cases when these eruptions took place and didn't bring about destruction in some way, but in most cases, it always brought tears to the eyes of the people. Despite all of that, there's blockbuster news from scientists. There are four volcanoes awaiting eruptions. Well, join us till the end of the video as we explore this. Dromboli Volcano one of the planet's most active volcanoes, Stromboli, has been erupting practically non-stop since 1932. It is referred to as the lighthouse of the Mediterranean because it has been active for a large portion of the last 2,000 years and because nighttime eruptions can be seen from a great distance. It is one of the most visited volcanoes in the world and is situated off the southern Italian coast. The stunning eruptions of Stromboli, which shoot streams of molten rock from its lava-filled central crater, are well known. Geologists refer to comparable eruptive activity at other volcanoes using the term Strombolian, since these eruptions are so unique and well known. The Iolian Islands' northeasternmost island is Stromboli. Its base is located more than 1,000 meters under the Tyrrhenian Sea surface, and it rises to a height of 924 meters above sea level. Stromboli is a member of the Calabrian Volcano Arc much like Mount Etna, on the island of Sicily. The sinking of the African tectonic plate under the Eurasian plate is linked to the volcanoes of the Calabrian Arc. Although Stromboli is situated on a northeast-southwest trending fault system, little is known about the process that feeds the magma chamber of the volcano and how they relate to the fault system. Eruption History for more than a thousand years, historians have documented Stromboli's activity, which ranges from gentle degassing to lava flows to powerful explosive eruptions. One explosion in 1907, according to records, was powerful enough to smash windows in the island's communities. And in 1930, there were powerful explosions connected to an earthquake that also produced a minor tsunami. The most recent eruption started in 1932 and has mostly gone on without interruption ever since. Mild explosive eruptions known as Strombolian eruptions occur when slugs of gas occasionally ascend through a volcanic conduit packed with magma, explode near the surface and spew lava fragments in the air. The lava finally forms a steep-sided volcanic cone and falls as bombs pieces bigger than approximately 3 inches, and scoria smaller fragments. The most recent of these were in 2002 and 2007, when Stromboli's eruptive behavior changed and vents near the top produced lava flows that were channeled to the sea by the Schiara del Fuoco. One explanation put out to explain the changes is that periodically, the magma in Stromboli's summit conduit breaks open dikes on the NW slope causing the eruption to occur as lava flows rather than via gas-driven explosions. Mount Pinatubo The Luzon volcanic arc in the Philippines' Mount Pinatubo explosion in 1991 was the second largest explosion of the 20th century behind Alaska's Nova Eruptor eruption in 1912. On April 2nd, phreatic explosion from a crack that developed on Mount Pinatubo's north flank signaled the start of eruptive activity. After being installed, seismographs started keeping an eye on the volcano for earthquakes. The frequency of seismic activity under the volcano varied day by day in late May. A series of shallow earthquakes that started on June 6 and were followed by an inflationary tilt on the mountain's upper east face resulted in the extrusion of a tiny lava dome. The volcano's first dramatic eruption, which occurred on June 12, sent an ash column 19 kilometers into the sky. On June 13, there were further explosions that night and the next morning. During this time, seismic activity increased significantly. On June 15, as even more strongly gas-charged magma came to the volcano's surface, it erupted shooting 40-kilometer-high ash clouds in the skies. Pumice and volcanic ash covered the landscape. Massive pyroelastic flows rushed down Pinatubo's sides, filling once deep valleys with 200-meter-thick new volcanic deposits. The volcano's peak fell during the eruption, creating a tiny crater that is 2.5 kilometers broad and removing so much rock and magma from its base. Satellites watched the ash cloud as it circled the globe many times, and fine ash from the eruption landed as far away as the Indian Ocean. 
at least 16 commercial aircraft unintentionally passed into the spreading ash cloud, causing damage worth $100 million. Darkness and the noises of Lahars thundering through surrounding river valleys accompanied the ashfall. A number of smaller Lahars swept across the Clark Earth site, crashing into structures and scattering vehicles as they flowed through the base in very strong sheets. With 30 kilometers of Mount Pinatubu, almost all of the bridges were damaged. A number of lowland communities were submerged in water or mud. The collapse of roofs beneath moist, heavy ash resulted in more than 840 fatalities and many injuries. Over the following years, rain continued to pose risks as the volcanic deposits were remobilized into subsequent mud flows. Following each big downpour, damage to bridges, irrigation canal systems, roadways, agriculture, and urban areas occurred. Rain-induced lahars had a significantly larger and longer-lasting impact on humans than the eruption itself. Mount Hood In the Cascade Volcanic Arc, Mount Hood is a stratovolcano that may be active. It is located in the Pacific Northwest area of the US and was created by a subduction zone on the Pacific coast. It's situated on the boundary between Clackamas and Hood River counties, approximately 80 kilometers east, southeast of Portland. It boasts the one year round lift surf skiing in North America and is not only the highest peak in Oregon, but also one of the loftiest mountains in the country based on prominence. The snow covered top of Mount Hood has many heights given to it throughout history. Three alternative heights are cited in modern sources, 11,249 feet, which is an adjustment made in 1991 to a 1986 measurement by the US National Geodetic Survey, 11,240 feet, which is based on a 1993 scientific trip, and 11,239 feet, which is of somewhat earlier provenance. Twelve named glaciers and snowfields may be found on the mountain. It is the fourth highest mountain in the Cascade Range and the highest peak in Oregon. Although an explosive eruption is improbable based on Mount Hood's history, it is thought that it is the Oregon volcano that is most likely to erupt. The US Geological Survey classifies the mountain as possibly active, despite the fact that the likelihood of an eruption over the next 30 years is predicted to be between 3 and 7 percent. Informally, however, the mountain is thought to be dormant. Volcanic Activity Numerous and ascetic or dachytic lava domes make up the glacially eroded summit region. During Pleistocene collapses, avalanches and lahars rapidly moving mud flows were created, which crossed the Columbia River to the north. Over the previous 15,000 years, the degraded volcano has seen at least four significant eruptions. The last three eruptions of Mount Hood have taken place in the last 1800 years, and they have created deposits that have mostly been spread to the south and west along the sandy and zigzag rivers. The most recent eruption was between 220 and 170 years ago, during which time dacitic lava domes, pyroclastic flows, and mud flows were created without any significant explosive eruptions. One of these now eroded domes is thought to be the source of the famous crater rock that can be seen below the top a little more recent occurrence that ended just before the arrival of the explorers Lewis and Clark in 1805 occurred during this time period, along with the most recent great eruption of 1781 to 1782. The most recent modest eruption took place in August 1907. When the mountain next erupts, the glaciers on its top slopes might be the source of potentially deadly lahars. Near the peak, there are vents that are known to release gases including sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. The only documented death associated with volcanic activity in Cascades before Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption was in 1934, when a climber died from oxygen deprivation while investigating ice caves melted by fumaroles in Mount Hood's Coleman Glacier. Since 1950, Mount Hood has seen a number of earthquake swarms annually, most notably in July 1980 and June 2002. The USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington monitors seismic activity and publishes weekly bulletins. Fumaroles close to Crater Rock and hot springs on Mount Hood's sides are the most recent indications of volcanic activity. Mount Fuji With a top height of 3,776.24 meters, Mount Fuji, which is situated on the island of Honshu, is the tallest mountain in Japan. After Mount Karinki, on the island of Sumatra, it is the second highest volcano in Asia and the seventh highest summit of an island on Earth. 
as an active stratovolcano, Mount Fuji last erupted between 1707 and 08. On clear days, the peak is visible from Tokyo, which is situated around 100 kilometers to the southwest of the mountain. The unusually symmetrical cone of Mount Fuji, which is covered in snow for roughly five months of the year, is widely utilized as a symbol of Japan in art and photography. Along with Mount Tate and Mount Haku, Mount Fuji is one of Japan's three holy mountains. It is both a special scenic beauty place and a historic site in Japan. Recorded Explosions The old Fuji mountain summit started to erupt with a big volume of lava around 11,000 years ago. The main body of Mount Fuji, the new Fuji was created by this lava. Since that time, the summits of old and new Fuji mountains have been parallel. Due to deterioration, the top portion of the old Fuji produced a significant landslide about 2,500 to 2,800 years ago, leaving just the summit of Shin Fuji. There have been 10 eruptions that have been confirmed by trustworthy records. There was media conjecture after the 2011 Thoku earthquake that the impact may have caused volcanic activity near Mount Fuji. The National Research Institute for Earth Science and Disaster Prevention had developed mathematical models in September 2012 that revealed the pressure in Mount Fuji's magma chamber may be 1.6 mega pascals greater than it was before its most recent eruption in 1707. Some media outlets took this to suggest that Mount Fuji could be about to explode, however indirect estimates of the kind utilized by NRIESDP are speculative and unreliable since there is no known way to measure the pressure of a volcano's magma chamber directly. This kind of volcano often exhibits additional signs pointing to increased eruptive hazards such as active fumaroles and freshly found faults. That's where we leave it for this episode. Do let us know what you think about this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so we know you appreciate what we're doing.